Okay, we have a quorum. It's at six six thirty. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. And who's up for first information? Don Chaplin. Mr. Chaplin. I, I'm I'm actually going to speak on Don's behalf. Uh, and uh, I know we all three came in at the same time, uh, but I'm Greg Brenner with WB Engineers and Consultants. We're supporting Don and his company EVGO with their national rollout of EV charging facilities across the country. And EVGO is one of the largest um, electric vehicle charging suppliers to support the federal, state, local governments as well as developers across the country. And we have a site um, in your jurisdiction that's located at um, uh, Campus Plaza. And I think that there were some questions in regards to whether or not the project would need to go before the planning board. And I think um, Dee Dee asked that we be here to speak to the um, specifics of the project so that the planning board had an understanding of the overall impact to the site. And I have some visuals that I'm prepared to share with you if you'd like me to go ahead and do that. Okay, uh, let me enable uh, screen sharing for others. Okay. So the, the proposed site is gonna be at the stop and shop um, on Northampton Road. And um, most of these sites go in shopping centers. They look to place them where folks are going to spend, you know, 30 minutes to an hour getting their shopping done. And you can see in the parking lot, this is the existing parking lot. Again, shop, stop and shop shopping center is planned north. There's a area right down here that does not have a landscaped island like the adjacent. And that's where EVGO is looking to place their facilities. Now I'm gonna share with you the site layout. So again, here are the two landscaped islands. This particular install is a modest two charging facility installation. The, the plan of the, uh, the install will not take away any existing parking spaces as we'll be using the free area here for the utilities um, transformer and then the distribution gear for the electric charging facilities, which would sit in the center aisle. Again, this, this, this um, space would be the handicap uh, facility and then this would be a general parking space. And this would be for any type of electric vehicle to come in, um, park, charge their, their, their uh, vehicle while they go and do their shopping. I'm gonna share with you a sample rendering of another installation. Um, not this one, because we have not rendered this one up, but to give you an understanding of the overall um, context. Again, this also is a two space um, uh, electric vehicle charging position. And you can see in the foreground, you have the two charging um, stations. And then in the background, the distribution gear and behind that is the transformer. So there's no canopies, there's no planned additional site lighting. The, the uh, facilities go right in on the asphalt. There of course will be concrete pads poured to accommodate the conduit that runs between the distribution gear and the charging stations. And of course there will be um, bollards to protect the gear from vehicular traffic. The, um, the site yard, the equipment yard, we typically landscape so that it's hidden from um, view, but has access as required by the utility for their transformer and also to the distribution gear as required um, in, in need for, for servicing. That is really the bulk of the, uh, the installation. Um, and so the question was, aside from the applicable and necessary building permits, was there a planning board 
submission requirement or public hearing, I think, DD, you were, you were wanting to confirm um, to enable us to facilitate our building permit process. Is there any signage at the uh, street advertising your charging stations? No, no signage at the street. They, they, the public is made aware of the, the locations via EVGO's website. And so they have an EVGO app and when they're around town, they can log on to their app and they can find the closest charging station. <clears throat> so, looks pretty benign. I mean, I don't see a big deal with it. Anybody else have comments? It's gonna, you know, it's certainly gonna take up some of the parking facility and we don't wanna have them go through all the gymnastics of the, uh, how much parking are they taking up percentage, et cetera, et cetera. You're right, it is pretty benign. Joe, actually the, where we're putting it, you can see there's no landscaped area in this location. The parking spaces start back one full space. So we're gonna take this area, we're actually gonna reduce the overall impervious area for that parking lot by adding these two landscape islands that will have the equipment. So while we're be doing some restriping, the net delta on parking spaces, our goal is to make it zero. Yeah. yeah I'm glad so, you brought it, I'm glad you brought the landscaping up. Uh, this is a typical example of uh, a sea of asphalt with no, no, there's very little uh, greenery in, in this particular parking. You, I've seen people go 45 degrees across that parking lot. So I wish you would landscape it and make it look decent. Well, our job is to make the facility certainly look decent, hide the equipment when we can but we, we want people to be able to find it as well. I'm just curious, who pays for the electricity? How do you pay for it when you charge your car? Michael, that's a great question. And so they have um, memberships with EVGO, so they pay through EVGO um, and they're, they're uh, billed via their um, account that they have with them. What would be the closest one charging station to this one in Hampshire County? If any, Don, do you have that information? By chance? Lexus, the Lexus one at the Pride gas station. Pride station has them. Yes, they have Tesla. Six. That's Tesla. That's the Tesla one. I mean, uh, yeah, that's a, Tesla, right? that's a Tesla one. Yeah, Tesla, I, I Tesla has a couple ahead. at the Pride, but there's some there's some generic ones at the Pride station too. Oh, I think there's two or three generic ones. What were you going to say, Don? I was just saying that uh, <clears throat> there, there's a lot of charging stations throughout Massachusetts uh, uh, in regards to uh, high powered ones. Uh, when I was with Electrify America, we uh, installed one over in uh, uh, Chicopee, Mass uh, by the Home Depot. So if Joseph Grodnick drives his uh, electric vehicle to the Amherst Williams game in Williamstown, will he be able to charge his battery in Williamstown to come back after Amherst loot wins? <laughs> Uh, well, the batteries nowadays can go up to three to 400 miles. So oh, okay. unless it's uh, that further out, uh, they should be perfectly fine. And it only take with these charging stations that we're putting in here, gentlemen, are um, they take about uh, 15 to 20 minutes uh, to charge a battery back up to 80%. Uh, they, so these are fast chargers. Uh, it gives the, the consumer the ability to uh, plug in, the app will tell them when it's ready. They can go shopping. They can go get something to eat and then come back and, and uh, disconnect and uh, be on their merry way. So this has nothing to do with the zoning aspects. So I'm just curious. Um, I, I budget basically an hour for a, uh, a grocery shopping trip. So I pull into one of these spaces. It takes you 20 minutes to charge me up, but I'm occupying it for an additional 40 minutes. How do you, how does that work with your business plan? Well, what, uh, what we do is, is the, we do have disclaimers that if you're there more than, you know, 45 minutes to an hour, that there could be additional fees, but we know that people are going to shop. So we don't, we don't hit people with fees when, you know, it's been 20, 25 minutes. We, we understand people going to shop, they're going to peruse, 
it, we just give them a, a, a email notification. Hey, uh, your car's charged. It's ready when, uh, whenever you're ready. And what will happen is we'll just continue just to send you a notification every 10, 15 minutes from that point, just so, just so that way you're aware of it. But we haven't had, we haven't had any issues with, with uh, uh, any complaints or, or people you know, staying there longer than uh, an hour. Uh, a lot of people that are, are looking for this is, uh, you, you know, when they go in the shop, you're going to shop there for 45 minutes to an hour. And a lot, a lot of, a lot of people don't go beyond that. Okay. Um, Any other comments, questions? There's a lot of bollards. What, what do you, how do you envision those bollards? Are those, you know, like bright yellow or are those going to no, be? No, they're, they're actually, if, uh, Greg, if you could pull up the, the rendering. Mm -hmm. I think they're they're actually, eight, eight uh, the island, right? Yeah, they're a blue, they're they're a yeah, they're a blue cut. It's a blue sleeve, okay. high visibility blue sleeve with uh, reflectors. Okay. So they just don't stick out. They we, we try to blend them in so it's just not an eyesore. Okay. I was entertain a motion. Uh, I'll just make one comment. I did have a conversation with the building inspector this afternoon about this, and. Um, I had asked for um, whoever your permitting coordinator was, I, I did ask for uh, some sort of evidence of uh, landlord yeah. approval. Um, but I would also just mention to you, it's not a zoning issue, but the uh, owner of this, of Campus Plaza has some outstanding unclosed issues with the building department that may uh, affect your ability to get a permit. Yeah, yes. so thank you. Dee pointed that out to us this afternoon and, and we've notified the, the folks on the EVGO side um, so we can try to determine what those things are and how we can help them resolve them so that they don't hold up our building permit. So I appreciate that insight. Yes. Okay, so I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval. Second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you all. Thank Next up. Next up uh, was someone who seems to have come and gone. Uh, I wrote it down as Lobsang, but they do not seem to be here anymore. The next one that came in was uh, just a telephone number, uh, last four digits, 1614. Yes, my name is Tim Healy. I'm here to talk about the Pet Hotel. The what? The Pet Hotel. Okay. Okay. Which is, yeah. which is, which is I, Jeff Squire from the Berkshire Design Group is, is here also to speak um, on, that, on, on their behalf. Mr. Perfect. Squire, haven't seen you in a long time. How are you? It's, it's been a while. How are you? Good, good. <laughs> Remind me what the street address is. Um, that's a good question. Um, it is 155, Russell. Okay. And the gentleman 1614, did he say his name was Ken Healy? That's correct, yes. Okay. So who has the floor? Is that, is that Jeff? Not Mr. Jeff so, does. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to sort of take you through the request. Um, if I've got screen sharing abilities, I can take it through. Yes, it's set up. Um, great. So we submitted some material to the board. Um, late last week, but this is um, in regards to the Pet Hotel at 155 Russell Street. Um, location of the, of the property is, is here. Um, and what they are proposing to do is in the back of the building where you see this concrete slab, um, they would like to do an outdoor, uh, a fenced outdoor um, you know, area for, for dogs to go out during the day. Um, you know, just fresh air, they don't, there's nowhere else on site really to take them. Um, so 
the, the plan is to enclose that portion of the, um, the slab in the back. There's some mechanical equipment on the east side in this location, um, but largely the, the remainder of it would be fenced um, and maintained on that, on that existing pad um, it's a, it would be a six foot fence along the, um, you know, along the street line. They'd also like to fence along the building just to avoid, um, you know, damage to the building and, and pet scratching at the, or animal scratching at the wall. But so this would be fully enclosed. There's also, um, you know, proposed to put a, uh, a, a roof structure on it as well, made of the same chain link fence, just to really avoid, you know, their primary concern is, is obviously, um, you know, animals escaping. So they want to ensure that they can do everything they can to prevent that from happening. But this area would be accessed via door that would be put in the exterior, uh, uh, the, um, the back elevation of the building. So it has access to, from the inside. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's really, Fairly simple project. A couple of um, arborvitaes on this end. We recognize that that noise attenuation is probably one of the the primary concerns. Um, and so one of the other things that we that we provided um, is um, just sort of a, a, a quick study and look at sort of the location of some of the residential properties um, adjacent to the to the existing uh, facility. And um, accompanying it was a uh, was a letter with a study that was done um, by a third party just talking about um, you know, noise and, and impacts to residential properties adjacent to, to kennels was, was this particular study. And the, you know, the focus of the study said that you know, the primary concern should be on those residents that are within 400 feet um, of you know, those locations. So in this case, it's really these couple of homes um, just to the west of the property. There are some homes across the street, um, across Russell Street, but one of the things to point out is that the, you know, the noise and traffic along Russell Street is actually at a, at a higher noise level than, you know, than, a, than a barking dog would be. And these would be you know, limited to daylight hours. So you know, eight to five PM, I think was what, um, what was being suggested. Um, no more than six dogs at a time. They would be out there, you know, for, for temporary, um, temporary periods just for, you know, again, fresh air and relief and be brought inside again. Um, and so this is a really very minor um, site modification that doesn't have any other, um, any other impacts to, to lighting, impervious cover, um, or any of the other, you um, uh, any of the other sort of site plan triggers. And so the request was for a waiver for site plan um, to see if we could move this forward. Now enclose it, do you mean with a fence or do you mean with walls? It'd be enclosed with a chain link fence. Okay. Yes. So really there's not gonna be any sound barriers, I mean. No, no, I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a, a yeah, a, a totally opaque fence. What, what would the hours of operation of this outdoor pet run be? So I believe eight to five was what was suggested by the owners. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got 8, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, limited to a maximum of six dogs at any one time. Seems like the vulnerable spot would be the house that's like 130 feet to the west. That's right. Has... Do we know if they are aware of this? And if we weigh this, are we throwing them, throwing their voice under the bus? Or? That's Mark. Mark brings up an excellent point, I think, because for those of us who are on the board, when they initially came in, there was a lot of concern by the neighbors about noise attenuation. And uh, a engineer was brought in from, I think, Framingham that was specializing in noise abatement. And uh, he gave a very, very impressive uh, presentation. And uh, they promised that the walls would be built uniquely to abate any particular noise that could be coming from the inside. So we probably should, in some way, notify the neighbors before we give approval. That's point one. And point number two is that 
the cement pad uh, has to be connected to the sewer, question mark, question mark, because it's going to be washed down. And question number three, if we pour a cement foundation there, it looks like it's going to be within the uh, rear yard setback. I think they're going on top of an existing slab. Right. Right. Where, where's the existing slab? It looks like it's, 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 it's that white strip immediately behind the building. Right. Doesn't the cement get very hot in the summertime? Uh, no, I mean if it's if it's a light colored concrete, it's far far less hot than you know asphalt or or a lot of other paving materials, certainly. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, I, I hear the argument that there's more decibels from the road. I mean, I can, I can imagine when some, some trucks gearing up out, out of the stoplight, you know, and, you know, or, or some Harley goes by that that's a lot louder, but, but there's also the argument that the, those noises pass and a dog barking could be repetitive. Although I agree. I don't think you're leaving them out there unattended, so maybe that wouldn't be. But I'm just I'm hesitant to not give the neighbors a voice in this. So I, I will just point out that both of the neighboring parcels appear to be rentals. Okay. Um, they are, and I will try to pull up information on where the tax bill gets sent. Okay. Didn't we have this issue with the facility put uh, east of this a bit, a bit uh, on the other side of the street? We had a kennel, or putting a kennel or a grooming facility, and wasn't that Barry Roberts' property? Yeah, but that one's set way back from the road. There's no, the nearest residence from that one over there is probably a thousand feet. Okay. I wonder if. No, well, I mean, I'm just, if a neighbor spoke up, if putting some kind of a solid panel wall at the west side would deflect noise more toward the east and the south, but I don't know. So it's all hypothetical because they may not care, but there could be someone there who's sensitive to well, that'd be a rough place to live if you're sensitive to noise, but right. I'm, I'm unfortunately not. the way the uh, system works, uh, I am not getting, used to be able to get the uh, assessor's card, which would have the address of the owner, the tax address of the owner, and I am not getting that anymore. Ah, there it is. Um, so, uh, the property most adjacent, the property immediately to the west is owned by, uh, someone in Hadley, but it, uh, it definitely an off-premises landlord. Mm -hmm. The uh, parcel, the second parcel that is between the first parcel and the farm museum is billed to an address in Granby. Again, fairly local. Fairly local, but uh, you know, again, it's a property management company in Granby and I haven't take the, taken the time to, nor will I, to look up what MBL management, where, where that actually exists. Um, so um, yeah, I just point out, you know, it's a fair question, but I did do point out that those are both, uh, you know, a notice to the owner would not necessarily reach the occupant. I would think the owner may still have comments, especially one of the, the Hadley owner may have comments concerned as, as it is, he is the local landlord. I and mean, we may not need to need a formal site plan approval, but at least we should, I'm kind of leaning towards a few of the members of the board saying we should at least give it the abutters 
abutting residences um, a chance to weigh in on this. I agree. How about the sewer hookup, Jim? Do we need a note from this? It's already on sewer. But it's going to, how much more are they going to put into it, et cetera, et cetera? No, I don't think they're going to be putting anything more in because it, it, it will be existing tenants, uh, existing uh, customers. Well, but they have to wash it down after the dogs do their exercise. It's not that critical. You know, I think it, it's probably, I mean, they, they already commented once that putting this, that amount of extra set sewerage or type of septic ins, type of septic into the system wasn't an issue. And isn't this just giving the dogs a chance to do outside what they uh, normally do inside? Yeah, but it's just a matter of what the, the, the washing down, I think, Mark, would be yep. ex, all extra washing down. Right. So I mean, what it, is... What is the plan for that? Are you going to recapture waste and bring it back into the system or are you anticipating sheet flow? Jeff? I mean, I think any, any of the solid waste I imagine will be picked up and disposed of like they do, you know, in the rest of the facility. Um, you know, any of, the, any of the urine probably is just gonna run off and, and you know, Join, join up with the rest of the stormwater system, which largely is sheet flow to lawn area and, you know, grassed areas, um, you know, it wouldn't be any different than, you know, taking your dog out for a walk really and um, relieving himself on the lawn. But yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll manage all the waste, um, you know, the same way they do with, with the majority of it inside. Well, I'm not sure running off into the existing groundwater is a great idea. I mean, it's one thing to have one or two dogs in your house doing their duty on your lawn as opposed to having six dogs at a time, multiple times during the day doing their duty out there and going somewhere. So I guess we want to see an answer on what is the plan for the waste. The aquifer protection, Jim? Was that? Aquifer, aquifer yeah. protection? No. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Is this near the aquifer district? The Callahan well. We can find out. Uh, it is hard to tell. Let me see if I can bring up a layer on the town map. It appears to just miss the aquifer. Okay. The aquifer goes through the middle of the adjacent parcel where the climbing structure lives. Mm. Okay. But this is just just west of the aquifer line. Okay. So sheet flow, no. sheet flow wouldn't uh, would it let it rain in go into the aquifer? No, no. Okay, fine. No, it's it. The, this is a uh, one. Um, let me see how big this is. This is a 1.3 acre parcel and it's completely out of the aquifer. So what, what would we do, Mr. Dwyer? Would we make a motion to uh, ask them to come back at, to our next meeting? And in the meantime, we reach out to that butter to the west? Well, it'll take more than one meeting, Mark. Okay. Because Mr. Squire is going to have to get us a list of abutters and we'll have to notify him. So it probably be, wouldn't be more likely a month from now. Oh, so a full blown. No, no, no. Okay. But by the time he gets the abutters, gets yeah. it to me, and we notify the people, we don't want to give the people two days' notice either. Right. So we'll continue 
the waiver discussion and tell people that we are going to be discussing a waiver of site plan approval for this project at our, well, that would be our first meeting in July, probably. So I think it's seven, six. That would be the sixth, yeah. Yeah, and if Jeff, Jeff is the, uh, the politician slash engineer that we know he is, he would reach out to the neighbors and kind of give them a heads up and tell them what he's going to do. So they may not even appear if they're, if they're satisfied. So I'll make a motion to continue this to July 6th for further discussion and notice to abutters. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Jeff, if you could give me a list of abutters on uh, one set of one set of labels is all we'll need. Okay. Great. Okay. And uh, just bring it to my house or mail them to me and I'll get the notice and sit the sent out. Okay. No Perfect. filing fee, no nothing like that. We'll just take care of it like that. Okay. That's great. Okay. Actually, tell you what, get me the list of abutters on envelopes with uh, stamps and that makes it easy for everybody. Absolutely. Thank Whatever you. Whatever makes it easiest. <laughs> okay. Great. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Good to see you all. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks. Next, Mr. Dwyer. Uh, Dorji. Hi. Or however it is pronounced. <laughs> yeah, that is exactly how you pronounce. Hi, everyone. So um, we have this location on 229 Russell Street. Used to be um, the little ice cream shop. It used to be Hadley Scoops. Yep. Um, we have this sign, but I wasn't aware of it. So I was going through the sign making process and I was told that we need to get approved by the town. And then I've called Bill and Bill has mentioned that I should be in this Zoom call to see, to sh kind of show everybody. What yeah. was this about again? Uh, it's for the signboard for 229 Russell Street. We're putting up a ice cream store there. You uh, say an ice cream store, this is a walk-in ice cream store? Yeah, kind of walking and you can just sit out. We're going to put out chairs there. It used to be existing Hadley scoops. So every, inside everything was kind of done. So everything is in place, but we just have to kind of, you know, um, we're just ordering stuff to go inside, just, you know, refrigerating stuff and just have the- That's been an ice cream place for quite a while. I mean, hasn't it for 50 years maybe? Yeah, they've closed for it's been yeah. for two two years, I believe. Just to, just a little history. A good friend of mine in college, Steve Klugman, suggested to me after we graduated, we take a year off and mm -hmm. run an ice cream shop, and that was where we were supposed to be. I declined. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it also has the drive-through. Oh, is this the one across from uh, almost of the Hadley Medical Center? That yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's it's uh, next to Sam. Sam's club. Okay. That that little. Stand, yeah. You know, they were selling ice cream. Then they were selling coffee for a while. It was Dusty Rose for a while. Yeah. yeah that was the one Brenda Fighting started. Yeah. Okay. And it's got a walk-up counter on the north side, and yeah, I think it has a window on the south side, but that wasn't used for the last couple of years. What is your sign is going to look? You want to reopen? Or you want to put signs up? What is the signs going to look like? Um, I can share the screen and kind of show what it looks like. Yep, go ahead. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully everyone can see Cute. this thing. What it will look like? I haven't made it yet, but it's going to be um, seven by four. Okay. Yeah. On, on on each side, yeah. Yeah. Oh, bubble tea, that'll be popular with the teenagers. <laughs> Hope so, yeah. And will you also have a sign, a sign on the building? Uh, so we have this one in the front and 
the drive through area will will be ha will have a menu menu one menu board lighting internally i mean not not internally lit not, not internally just from outside okay yeah how, how big is approximately this sign looks like uh seven by four and the sign on the building similar to this one she a said, little smaller she said there's a menu on the building there isn't but there the outside outside the, the other side board. will have a menu board one sign on a building? I, I think she's saying no signs on, no sign on the building. Yeah. Oh, no sign on a building. Yeah, no. I thought she said a smaller sign on a building. For, yeah. for the menu. For the menu board. Oh, for the menu and board. Oh, okay. Just our logo and then just have the list of things that we sell there. Okay, so this will be the only sign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. are, okay. are you gonna cook any cooked food? No, no cooking. No hot dogs or anything? No, maybe maybe later on. Bubble tea. Yeah. Oh, bubble, I love bubble tea. <laughs> I hope you come down with <laughs> I haven't had good bubble tea since I went to Taiwan years ago. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I hope. That was the first time I had it, and I've had it in other places, and it just couldn't compare. No. <laughs> Okay. Any other comments or discussion? Uh, so it's a seven by four. So that's what twenty eight feet, uh, twenty eight square feet on each side. Yes. So that's good, right? I'll make a motion and, to approve the sign. And the lighting is from the ground. Is that what it it, it lights up? Yes. Onto it. Okay. I would second that motion. Motion a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, I just had a quick question. So we're we're in the middle of making everything yet. So if we remove the on the little heaven, would that be any issue? If we remove what? Word the graphics. The on the, the sign. If she changes the graphics, right? Yeah. yeah. No, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. Thank you so much. And this is not uh, this is not going to be a seasonal business. It's twelve months a year. Um. Yes. Okay. Might have to have. Might have to add coffee in the future. Yeah, coffee and hot dogs. Yeah. 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 Miss Dee Dee. Yes. Hi. Hello. Time for your questions now. Oh, okay. So getting back to Mattress Firm, um, they will be going in front of the ZBA. My understanding, what Linda LaDuke is telling me is that um, they're looking for the sign to be illuminated. I will need to find out from her if that is internally or not, uh, but I wanted to make sure what, you know, is able to be, you know, go there. So it has to be lit, but it cannot be internally lit. Correct? It cannot be internally illuminated. If they want to go for internally, illum internally illuminated, they need a zoning variance. Okay. Because their grandfathering has expired on that building. And they do not have a hardship. They can't show true hardship for getting an internal illuminated sign. So enough said on that. Okay. And I think that's why she was asking too, because she said the, what they were going for was just to get that sign. Um, if there, she didn't find anything stating about the illumination going for a variance on it. So that's why she wanted to make clear of what you guys have said in the past. Well, they're also limited on size. How, how right. I mean, size and quantity. How many? Yep. How big is the sign that they would like? That I'm not sure. Um, I don't have the paperwork with me, uh, but 
uh, Linda does. So I'm going to clarify all that with her to make sure that okay. when they have that meeting that they're clear on that. It's 40 it's square feet for a, a tenant in a multi-tenant building. I think part of the confusion is when the fitness place went in, that's been broken up for, Manny's has been broken up for three units now. And there's a fitness orange orange theory. Yeah. And orange theory went to the ZBA and got permission to put up like four signs in X in, in, and in excess of 40 square feet uh, among all of them. Um, so th I think there might have been a concern that Orange Theory had taken up all of the available signage for the entire building. Um, I think that Mattress Firm is still entitled to it. It's 40 square foot sign, just however many, uh, but the ZBA did give Orange Theory sort of a free hand to put up signs all around the building, I think. Yeah, I know. And I didn't realize that until I saw the plans again for when Mattress Firm was going in, my understanding and the majority of all of our understanding is only two uh, businesses going in there. And there's actually a small little retail spot there in the middle. How they're going to do that, I'm not sure because right now there's no bathroom or any there's only the front entrance is their uh way their egress so um so they're uh, if they're going to put another retail store in there they're going to have to have a sign for that too so i'm not sure what the whole plan is but so now if it does get approved by zba you want them to go back in front of you guys again that is correct okay. well in terms so, of size you want to give Bill, you want to give your legal interpretation speech, or should I give a whack at it uh, about the ZBA at granting the sign from a historical perspective? So, the, you know, the, um, hey, I'll let you take a take a. <laughs> okay, I'll let you take a stab at that. Okay, in the past, uh, we had a sign by law, and uh, everybody said, well. The sign, Zare's sign was on top of the roof and it was 10 times the size that it should be. Why can't we have one? Well, eventually you have to declare a hardship to go before the Zoning Board of Appeals. But the Zoning Board of Appeals at that time seemed to ignore the real legitimacy of a hardship. It doesn't mean financial. It doesn't mean because you have one before. And they kept granting, granting, granting uh, variances to sign. And finally, the planning board says, this is almost at about to a uh, zoning change. So the planning board threatened to, the next time one came before the Zoning Board of Appeals to say that it is not a hardship and this must stop. How am I doing so far, Bill? Ah, uh, you're fine. Okay, so Dee Dee, if this continues that they start granting signs above and beyond the uh, what was approved at the town meeting. And uh, I think there should be a time where the planning board kind of steps in and said, look, these are zoning changes. They're not any hardship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Bill- Lee, uh, you can, uh, Mr. Dwyer, please correct me if I'm wrong. Just because the ZBA grants the variance for the signs, doesn't mean the planning board has to approve the sign. That's correct. I think we, we have separate jurisdiction under site so, plan approval. So if they come before us, the planning board can still say no to mattress firm. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. And I would be willing to bet we will. Well, and, and Bill, that's just like, it was it Applebee's that Tommy spoke to you about? Um, they were yeah. complaining because they wanted signs. Why couldn't they have the signs like Chili's and I and stuff? But obviously, Applebee's wasn't grandfathered in, or so. Was that the case? Yes, correct. Um, I think they came in. I'm not. I'd have to dig up the. Uh, I can tell you when the sign bylaw was amended. What I can't tell you is when uh, various things were. Uh, uh, 
the sign bylaw was most recently amended in uh, 2011, 2012. So um, you know, depending on when something was built, mm -hmm. uh, it might be affected. Uh, there's a 2009, 2011, and 2012, and I forget which one was the big one. Um, so some people might be grandfathered depending on when they got site plan approval, but they would have to uh, stay within the limits of what they were granted at that time. So um, I know Chili's did come back to us a few years ago. I, I don't remember, it's a little bit of a blur, uh, what they were asking for. They were doing a, a rebranding um, it didn't, as I recall, we weren't too concerned about it at the time because it wasn't too much different than what was there. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the biggest, the last, what the last zone change we made to the signs was to allow multiple signs on the building, provided they didn't exceed the 64 or 40 square feet threshold. The large change regarding um, signs was in 2009 or maybe even a little bit before that because Lisa Sanderson was on the board then and she was kind of on that committee that looked at all these signs. We went back to the town sometime during that time frame to try to propose a larger sign if the building was set back more than, I want to say, several hundred feet from the road. Mm -hmm. And the town overwhelmingly voted all that down. They did not want bigger signs. So they were loud and clear no big signs and no internally illuminated signs. Mm -hmm. I personally like the signs when they have the goosenecks over them and I, I think it makes it look very different. I like the look of it, but. So oh, we agree. <laughs> <laughs> so Jim, if I understand, if someone comes here to the planning board and we limit their sign as we do and then they go to are they going to the zba just for the sign or for other things and then throwing the sign in or is it a combination of no could be any of those oh. but typically they don't go to the zba after we've given them a sign permit. they go to the zba first and then come to us and like mr dwyer has agreed to we don't have to approve that sign we are a different authority and I'd be willing to bet if they come to us with a ZBA variance, I can think of at least several of us are going to say, no, we're not going to approve it. In that sign, they want to put on the back of the building, correct? So it's looking on, it's on South Maple. I, I don't know. I'm not sure where, where they, where the Yeah, I think are. that's what it is. Uh, but I know Orange Theory, I don't believe has a sign in the back of the building. I think that's what their thing was, is to have it more noticeable. Um, but I, I don't know if people are going to know that they're there. They, they're not, they don't want to sign on Route 9? Well, I believe they're losing their sign in the pylon because right. of the store that's taking over their spot right. is getting that one. So I'm not sure what else, I mean, is there anything else that they can do? No. Yeah. Because they, they volunteered. That was a question that was raised when they gave up that spot. Where's Mattress Firm going to put a sign? And they said they're not going to have one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think Athleta that took over their spot is uh, putting their sign there on the pylon. Okay. So, all right. Well, I will make uh, ZBA aware of things just so they they know, because um, unfortunately, it seems like they're just getting these things, and um, you know, I think they need to kind of further research some of the stuff before they actually have some of the meetings. But I don't know. But I will let them know that then. Well, let us know when the uh, hearing is, and I will attend it by Zoom and make, make the planning board comments known. Okay, yeah, and, and Mark will actually be there because Mark has, um, he's got a hearing that day, too, so. Although I think I, he gets that, too. 
I may not want to piss off the ZBA. <laughs> no, I'll you, let Jim do that. As, 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 as because you're going up, you may want to more or less be silent, Mark, so that you don't yes. make it look one like you're <laughs> trying to shoot yourself on a foot or speaking up on two sides of the foot, if you would. Right, right. I will, I will not wear my planning board hat that night. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for that information. Thank you, Didi. Thank you. Didi. All right. We'll see you guys later. Bye. All right. All right. Um, let's see. We have. So I'm going to make a motion to reopen the special permit renewal oh, right. of heirloom collection. I'll second it. Doesn't appear that we have a lot of audience. This is just a typo correction. Okay. Did, did you second it, Jim? Or yes. Yeah, I okay. did. Mr. Dwyer will explain. So uh, this was our first renewal, and um, we did it for a year. And then I got an email from the uh, council, Attorney Albano, saying, uh, my client says it was supposed to be a two-year renewal, wasn't it? So I looked at the, um, um, I looked at the bylaw, and indeed, it is a two-year renewal. Right. It, so um, we just have to, uh, that, was, that was our mistake, because we had uh, not done any of these before. And I'm trying to remember when that was, so I can do the same. So the original permit is one year, and then they renew it for two years, and then it's in perpetuity? Uh, there's a second two-year renewal. Oh, OK. Two, so two, two, two year renewals. So after five years, it's in perpetuity. Correct. So let me just flip through. Uh, okay. Like it should have been before that. So let me just check my agendas. Um, Okay, that was May 4th. So the motion was to, uh, okay, so. Um, to, to reopen the. Okay, so we, need, we should do a vote first on the motion to reopen. We have a movement. We have a motion to reopen the hearing. Any other discussion? All in favor of reopening, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. OK, so that should have been two year. Only approved. One year, yeah, our error. Okay, so now I'm going to make a motion uh, to find that there have been no concerns raised. and to renew for two years, retroactive to February 28, 2021. That's the motion. That's the motion. We have a second? Second. A motion a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. That takes them to 2023? Yes.
to uh, February 28 of 2023. And the bylaw does say that the renewal season is January and February of, of each year. So we would be looking for them to come back in probably January of 2023. Okay. Next item, um, we've got at our next meeting, we have uh, the adult bylaw, I mean adult bylaw, adult marijuana facility for Hadley, Hadleaf, I think that's how you're gonna say, Hadleaf. Hadleaf, yeah. Air, um, green something or other. And uh, at that same meeting, we'll be adopting the regulations for the MS4. And I added the uh, payment in lieu regulation. I think everybody got a copy of that as well. Is that a yes? Everybody got a copy, received a copy of all that stuff? Yes. Yes, I did get a copy of that. Yes. Take a look at that payment in lieu and see if that's how we want to word it. Uh, just to make sure we have it put together properly. And uh, we can comment on that at the public hearing. And let's see, we also have nominally, uh, who else do we have scheduled? Oh, it, uh, they have the garage. Right. Is that continued? It was continued to uh oh and to the 15th yeah and kevin for uh i mean he's a even though kevin's request expires on a 22nd we'll need to take it up on the 15th Six fifteen. <laughs> Like a busy night. Well, it assumes that everybody is going to be ready to go. Right. Yes. Everything. Right. And I, I sincerely doubt Kevin will be ready. I also sincerely doubt Hadley Garage will be ready. They're waiting on the DOT, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're dealing with DOT. It appears you know, Mark, about dealing with the DOT. <laughs> Uh, from my prior life, not much at the state since I, I'm just on campus. But yes, when I was in the private sector, we, I occasionally came up against Goliath. <laughs> oh, um, what's his name? Um, Randy texted me today that uh, Exotic Auto will have our his pictures available at our next meeting. And that's the 15th. I do have one bill to make to pay. And that's the planning board stipend for the second pay period of this year, a total of $575. I'll entertain a motion to pay the planning board. I think you ought to make it clear that's not for each person. That's the total. <laughs> okay. I'll make Mr. a motion to pay to endorse the payroll. Yeah, Mr. Dunn, Mr. Sarzinski, and Mr. Zagrodna get a whopping hundred dollars. Mr. Dwyer gets one twenty-five, and the chairman, myself, gets a whopping one fifty. So we are probably the least expensive board in the entire town of Siphons. Maybe the state. Yeah, <laughs> hey, uh, I've been. I, I was reduced in October to fifty percent uh, hours at uh, my primary employer, and so I have to submit to the unemployment that tries to make up part of my loss. And I, you know, any other income. And so I have to put down $7.69 a week from the town of Hadley, which is 400 that's, divided that's by 50. Yeah, $7.69 <laughs> a week. That's, yeah, that, that, I put that, I put that 
driving the DUA every week. What, what is that, like 20 cents an hour? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I made a motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Don't we have to recuse ourselves because we benefit from that one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That one we all benefit in the same degree. Yeah. Um, I have nothing else. Anybody have anything? Uh, no, I have nothing else either. Uh, oh, yeah, we, we did get a request from uh, the town administrator that she's applying for some kind of a grant. And she sent it to myself and Bill about certain things that the planning board um, or planning board and zoning bylaws pertain to. There's a whole list of stuff, but Bill and I came up with, I think, five topics that uh, are pertinent. Um, uh, let's see. Is it fairly benign or is it going to be something like requesting? No, this is, this is some kind of a grant for MassWorks. If we put solar panels on the uh, town common or something like no, that. No, no, no. I'm not sure what this is. Not important. No, we're going to sheet flow urine across Joe's driveway. OK. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just sent everybody a copy of it. When it's got different things, um, it's, it's a grant for Mass Works for oh reimbursement for water Route Nine water and sewer line. That's what that is. That would be wise to serve our taxpayers. So interest. Yeah, it'd be great. Great if we can get it, and it would yeah. be. Uh, it would be a good uh, strategic grant to make because it will carry so much, um, cover so much if it is done simultaneously. Yeah. You know, this is in our purview, I don't think. I just got a letter from the Friends of uh, Lake Warner. I haven't opened it yet, but they're probably requesting that I make a donation again to try to prevent the inevitable in that Lake Warner is filling up <laughs> and eventually it, nothing that they do piecemeal is going to solve the problem. The thing has to be dredged. So talking about grants, I, I remember, I don't know, was it 20 years ago or so, Puffer's Pond was dredged because it's a man-made uh, water, water uh, source. And I'm, I think they've got to do something about Lake Warner because these little piecemeal things getting out there and Doing this and doing that just isn't working. I know there's issues with uh, potential environmental problems or whatever, but that can be addressed because yeah. in a hundred years, this thing is going to, it's, it's just not going to be there. Yeah, I mean, when, Lake Warren has never been a deep pond. No. Only, there was only about two deep spots. One was behind the Jersey, and one was behind the old bridge right off of uh, Stockbridge or Knightley Road there. And one, one is behind my family's old property there, the channel. It was very deep. Oh, really? Very you deep know? because that's where the that's where the river channel, the uh, Mill River Channel went. Okay. But, uh, you know they're 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 trying to prevent stop the inevitable from happening. The lake is filling up, and something needs to be done besides these little piecemeal things. So that's just an editorial, as Joe Zagradic would say, an editorial comment. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Anybody have anything else? Can't think of anything at the moment. Okie doke. Entertain a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Beating is history. Thank you and thank you, John. <laughs>